Amen. Amen. Happy risen Savior on today. Greetings to each and every one. I want to welcome you. Those that are watching, we want to welcome you this morning, thanking our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for rising and having the keys to life and death, heaven and earth in his hands. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one. We have a vision here at Word for Life Ministries, and if you will help me, we'll take our time and say it. Two, recover, reclaim, admonish, and direct souls to God for the upbuilding of his kingdom. Please enjoy yourself this morning. Let the anointing of the Lord fill each and every one this morning. We have prayed and asked the Lord to bless and send his presence on this Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. Good morning. Amen. 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 We're going to do the scripture reading, and it's going to be found in Luke chapter 24. You can open your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. They'll also put it up on the screen. We're going to read the first 10 verses. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Some people call it Easter. We honor the Lord for his sacrifice. And we want to read the first 10 verses and just reiterate what this day is all about. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 10. We want to read those. Amen. I see people getting that. Getting that. To our online viewers, thank you for joining us. Go ahead and get your Bible, your Bible app. Luke 24. We want to read that. Let's read that all together. It is a reminder of why we celebrate today. Was it on this very day? We can't say. We just know that it happened. Amen. History records it. So let's begin in the first verse. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified again the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. What things? They said, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. So we celebrate today. We want to come this morning and just give God a praise of thanksgiving as we continue on in the service. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the rain, Lord, that you've given to this earth, Lord. For we know, Lord Jesus, that you know, Lord Jesus, how to give the earth and your people what we need. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time in the sanctuary where we can honor you, where we can bless you, where we can say thank you, Lord, for, Lord, the great work that you've 
done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the hope that is in your name. It is because of your resurrection from the dead that we have hope in eternal life. It is because your resurrection from the dead that we have hope, Lord Jesus, that we will rise again one day. Father, have your way in this place and we will open our mouths and we will clap our hands and we will do our dance unto you, Father. In Jesus' name we thank you amen hallelujah come on make a joyful noise unto the Lord amen we welcome everyone here glad to see the the, the saints coming out glad to see our guests coming in amen, amen. we just want you all to know we're a noisy bunch amen. <laughs> so don't mind us amen thank come you, on Jesus. and join in with us as we celebrate amen the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to rejoice in celebration on today. How many know that Jesus is risen? Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is risen. So I want to ask you to get ready to put your hands together and to celebrate along with us. We're going to clap our hands and we're just going to rejoice in this place in the house today. Amen. Amen. So come on, let's declare risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Put your hands together like this. Amen. He's risen forever glorified. Come on, come on, Thursday, sing. Risen, he's risen. King Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah.
died for your sins. Hallelujah. He died for my sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a new hope. Hallelujah. In Jesus. There's a new peace in Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a new strength. Hallelujah. In the yes. salvation of our Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And salvation comes through Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the name yes. that saves yes. us. Hallelujah. So we want to declare, hallelujah, that we will live. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can speak that over yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, all right. We're going to ask you to help us again. Come on, put your hands together like this. Amen. All right. We're going to bring that up a little bit in the house. There you go. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It's in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, shout. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh.
be for you? Who can be against you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's got it covered. Hallelujah. Whatever's fighting against you. Hallelujah. God's already working on, on our behalf. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And when we think about, hallelujah, the resurrection of our, of our Lord and Savior, hallelujah, how great, hallelujah, is the power yes, of our God, hallelujah, so to robe himself in flesh, hallelujah, to come down as a man, hallelujah, and put himself on a cross, hallelujah, hallelujah, to die on our behalf, hallelujah. So we want to declare to our God, Lord, you are great, hallelujah. You are the name above all names, hallelujah. Yes. Just take a few moments Thank you, Jesus. and let's worship the Lord together as Thank we declare you, to the King of Kings how great is our God. Thank Thank you. Oh, my God. 
that the Lord, the Lord is grace. Somebody say that the Lord is grace. Oh, oh, we declare today. Somebody say that the Lord is grace. Somebody say that the Lord is grace. Anybody say that the Lord is grace. Oh, And your name is great, and it is greatly to be praised. There is none like you. Hallelujah. I want to ask Pastor Mary to say, man, if you would head on over to, amen, the organ or the, the keyboards. Hallelujah. And uh, I want us to do a congregational song this morning. Hallelujah. You know, in many of our churches, as we, amen, have grown in the process of doing praise and worship, oftentimes, amen, we have not had the opportunity or don't take the opportunity to sing some of the hymns, amen, hallelujah. Now, I'm going to put my, my AV team on the spot, but I need you to search for the song at the cross so you can put those words up on the screen, amen. amen. But I want you to help me, amen, to sing this hymn, amen, at the cross, amen. amen. The words say, at last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head to such a worm as I? And then we're going to declare together at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. 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 We're going to take that down a couple of keys if you can. Amen. You start off a high. Amen. Amen. At last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Come on, let's declare at the cross together. See, at, at the, the cross, cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Do that again at the cross, see. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's another song we used to do, and we had communion this week as we celebrated, amen, Holy Week, and we just remembered the Lord in consecration, 
Amen. And I just want to talk a little bit about the blood. Is that all right today? Can we talk about the blood of Jesus? Oh, the blood of Jesus. Follow me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. There we go. All the blood. All the blood of Jesus. It was all the blood. All the blood of Jesus. It was his precious blood. All the blood of Jesus. That's what sheds white. I know it was the blood. Yes, yes. I know it was the blood. Here we go. I know it was the blood for me. You know, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Come on, declare. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. I know it was. I know it was the blood for me. You know what day? You know one day when I was Jesus died. He died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. You want to know whose blood it was? It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. Tell your neighbor, say. It was my Savior's blood. It was Jesus' blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. You know one day. Oh, one day when I was no, alone. Jesus died. Jesus he died upon the cross. And I know. I know it was the blood for me. They placed him in a tomb. They placed him in a tomb. Come on, help me out. They placed him in a tomb for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. But I love this part because he got up. From the grave, yes, oh, yeah. he, he got, got up, up from, from the grave. grave. Come on, and clear, say. He, he got, got up from the grave for me and for you, yes. One day when I was lost, Jesus died, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know, and I know it was the blood for me. And I know, and I know, and I know, and I know it was the blood. I know it was. I know it was the blood. It was Jesus' blood. I know it was the blood for me. You know what day? You know one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. How many know that it was Jesus' blood for you? It was Jesus' blood for me, and I'm so grateful today to know that it was the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're here today because of the blood of Jesus. We're delivered today because of the blood of Jesus. Tell somebody I'm free today because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're going to get ready for our life prayer on today, and I'm going to ask one of our, I'm going to ask one of our youth on this morning. Hallelujah. One of our young people, amen, this young man, he's... I believe 16 years of age now. Amen. He's a wonderful basketball player. Um, he does well in school. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, as a teenager, sometimes there's friction, right, between teenagers and their parents, right? Amen, Sister Carol. But let me tell you something about this young man. From the first time that we met this young man, probably about 12 years ago, amen, this young man, his parents taught him how to pray. And this young man loves to pray. And even with all the accolades that he gets in school and all the 
things that occur in basketball and track and all of those things, the one thing I'm glad about is that he has learned how to trust in Jesus. And on today, I want to ask this young man to come. Brother Terrell, he's going to come. And he's going to lead us into our life prayer of this morning. And you may be wondering for our guests, what is life prayer? The Bible declares unto us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And oftentimes throughout our life, amen, we've learned to speak death in our situations and over the people that we love rather than life. This is the opportunity for us to turn the tide. Hallelujah. Because prayer, prayer is powerful. Prayer is, is potent. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And sometimes, many of us in our daily lives, amen, not so much that we've forgotten how to pray, amen, but we've forgotten to take the time to pray, the time to kneel before God, the time Amen. Just to get before the face of God, not asking him for things, but looking to the Lord for his presence in our lives. And so on today, we want to ask you to take this opportunity as we make supplication unto the Lord. Amen. In our lives. Amen. That we pray and we intercede not only on our behalf, but let's intercede and pray on the behalf of others. Somebody needs to experience the life of Jesus Christ today. Somebody needs to experience salvation today. Somebody needs hope today. You might be standing to somebody today who's in need of hope and you have the ability to speak hope and to pray hope and to pray life into their circumstance and into their situation today. Can you do that with me today? Can you do that? I'm going to ask Brother Jarrell if you would come and lead us before the throne of grace in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here in the first place, Father. None of this would have been possible without you, Father, and we thank you, God. I want to start off and give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. Thank you for just being there for us, oh, Lord God. Thank you for breathing into our lungs every single morning, God, giving us life, oh, Lord God. Not every day is promised, oh, Lord God, but you promise to keep us under your blood, oh, Lord God, and that is a promise you will keep, oh, Lord God. Because all you know is the truth, oh Lord God. All you know is righteousness. All you know is righteousness. All you know is honesty, Father. And we thank you, God, for continuing to be the awesome, amazing, wonderful God that carries us through our lives in and out, Father. And we thank you for everything you are done, oh Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for restoring us with your life, Father. Thank you for giving us life, Father. We thank you, God. Thank you for laying down your life for us, oh Lord God. On this day, you rose three days, Father. We thank you, God. Even when we didn't deserve it, Lord God, even when we were knee deep in sin, Father, you still laid down your life for your people, God, so that we would have the opportunity to learn about you and your kingdom of heaven, oh Lord God. And thank you, God, for saving all of our souls, oh Lord Father God, because there is no life apart from you, Father. So we thank you, God, for just being with us, God. Just continue to be our light, Father. Just continue to guide us, God. Just continue to show our way, oh Lord God. Because sometimes when we feel as if there is no way, Father, we could look up and look unto you, God, because you will always give us a way, Father. You will never leave, leave us second-guessing. You will never leave us confused, Father. You give us all the clarity we need in our lives, oh, Lord God, and we thank you, Father. We just continue to follow you, follow your footsteps and your words, oh, Lord God, so that we can live the holy and righteous life, oh, Lord God, that we continue to get back to you, Father, and continue to follow in your footsteps, Father. We thank you, God. And God, we remember those who do not have your salvation, oh Lord God, who have not received your promise of eternal life with you, oh Lord God, in heaven, oh Lord God. We pray for those right now so that you will find their hearts, oh Lord God. You will enter their hearts, oh Lord God. You will enter their lives and give them a real life, Father. Give them a real life full of freedom, God, and joy and happiness. Take away all their struggles, all their worries when you enter their lives, Father. We thank you, God, because we know you are capable and we know you are possible and we know it's possible for you. We know that you will, Father. We know that you will, God, and we thank you, God, for never leaving us, never forsaking us, God, and we thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for giving us everything, everything, laying down your life for us, Father, and we think we can never thank you enough, God, and we thank you, Father, and we thank you, God. When they crucified you, God, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, God, for going through that for us, oh, Lord, God, God. We thank you, God. And we thank you, God. We need your presence, Father. We need your presence, Father. We need it more than ever, God. And we thank you, Father. And we thank you for just being here with us today in this place, oh Lord God. 
Thank you, God, for your presence. God, thank you, God, for your spirit, your promises, your mercies, your wonders, your blessings, your miracles. God, we thank you for it all, God, because the list could go on and on for things that you have done in our lives. Oh, Lord, God, it just does not end. So we thank you, God. We thank you, God. You are so worthy, God. You are so worthy, Lord. It is your name that we call upon in times of trouble, oh, Lord, God. It is your name that we call upon, Father. We thank you, God. We thank you for being the only one true living God for us, God. And we thank you for everything that you continue to bring in our lives, Lord God. And we speak life, Father. Thank you for giving us the choice between life and death, Lord God. And thank you for more specifically for telling us to pick life, Father. So we choose life today, oh Lord God. And we thank you for everything, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that somebody, amen, was blessed today, amen, through that prayer. Listen, listen, saints of God, just because that prayer may have ended, amen, doesn't mean that your prayer ends, amen. You can continue to pray and seek the face of the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today, amen. We are grateful to have you in the house today. Come on, put your hands together. You know, I'm excited because, amen, uh, with, you know, that rain was coming down a little earlier today, amen, but I prayed, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, can you allow us to have a little bit of sunshine today, and I'm looking out right now, and amen, there's a little bit of light, amen, is that all right? Hallelujah. Some of you had a chance to come today, amen, because we prayed, Lord, can you just stop the rain for a minute, amen, so folks can, can get out and celebrate amen your death burial and resurrection we're glad that you have joined us today and i'm so glad to see our guests in the house i'm glad to see amen our neighbor today vladi and her mother god bless you good to see you amen we have chef cedric is in the house amen god bless you my brother and your wife amen thank you all for coming today amen and uh let's see would this happen to be sister hannah amen is, is this your daughter here Amen. God bless you. I keep hearing about, we've, we've been hearing about, amen, Sister Hannah's daughter, and I'm so glad that we have a chance now, amen, to put a face to the daughter. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome each of you to Word for Life Ministries. Amen. Um, we are a small but growing church. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we thank the Lord for the opportunity that he's given us to come into the house of the Lord and to celebrate his name. And how much more to celebrate the day of days, the day that almost 2,000 years ago that Jesus got up from the grave. That is wonderful. And that is an opportunity that we can celebrate Jesus. And you know what? Amen. Easter Resurrection Sunday is not the only time we celebrate Jesus. Tell somebody we celebrate him every day. Amen. Every day, every day when I get up, I'm grateful and I'm thankful, amen, because the Lord has allowed me to see a brand new day. I'm grateful and I'm thankful because he delivered me from my sin, amen. He cast my sin into the sea of forgetfulness, amen. I'm grateful because he washed me in his blood. I'm grateful because he filled me with his spirit. I'm grateful because I know that he has gone away to prepare a place for me that where he is there, one day I will be with him. And I'm looking forward to that day. Is there anybody else that's looking forward to that day? Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. Now, listen, I know some of you all have dinner on. Amen. And I know that you're looking at the clock and checking and wondering, amen, if you're, if you're, uh, amen, if you're, your stew or your roast, amen, you want to make sure it's not going to burn. Amen. So, Lord willing, we want to have you out in a good time today. Uh, but before I get ready to minister and bring the word today, um, we are going to do a couple of things. Amen. So, we are going to have our announcements. I ask that you stay attentive to the announcements. And I'm going to give our guests, I'm going to give you a little opportunity, amen, uh, to get prepared. Amen. Uh, if you did not have an opportunity already to fill out either a paper guest card or an electronic guest card, amen, there will be some more information in the announcements that will let you know how to do that. Amen. And so when you fill out the guest card, um, there will be a questionnaire that allows you to let us know how we can best serve you. Whatever your needs are, whether you are in need of prayer, amen, maybe there's something that you're going through and you, amen, want to, amen, uh, seek consultation with me, the pastor, or some of our ministers here. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Whatever it is, amen, whatever your need is, if you would take that opportunity to apply it because we will get that information we will follow up with you whatever that need is we are here to serve God put us here to serve 
Amen. My wife and I, we've been serving now in this ministry for over 17 years. Amen. We've been serving. This is my 18th year as senior pastor here at Work Life Ministries. Amen. And the Lord has blessed us over that time. Amen. Although we are a small-ish, amen, church, but yet our reach has been global. Amen. And people have come and they have left this place with teaching and instruction and training and have gone on to other parts of the country to be a blessing to the ministries wherever God has sent them. And uh, we're grateful today because we understand our place in the dynamic of the body of Christ. Amen. And so uh, we want to let you know that we love you. We're grateful that you have come today. Know that we are praying with you and praying for you and whatever your needs are. Amen. If you let us know specifically what to pray for, we will be praying for you. Amen. So God bless you. We're going to bring, amen, an announcements up at this time, and then immediately following the announcements, there will be a video in preparation for the message today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Want to know what's happening at Work Life Ministries? Then be sure to listen attentively to our announcements of upcoming events, which are as follows. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and we want to welcome our guests to Word for Life Ministries. Thank you for worshiping the risen Savior with us today. If you haven't done so already, please take out your phone or smart device and scan the QR code now or text GUEST to 858-360-1446. Complete our guest card and let us know how we can best serve you today and in the future. Our pastors would love to meet you after service. We also have a special gift and treats for you and your family. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to worship with you again soon. Word for Life Ministries is committed to helping each of us draw closer to the Lord. Our theme for 2024 is focus on Jesus. Let's remove all distractions, let's cast our gaze upon the Lord, and let's focus on Him. Word for Life Ministries' new secure texting platform is here. Text in Church allows us to communicate more effectively and enhances our ability to follow up with you. When you see our new text number, 858-360-1446, be sure to lock it in. Our fully plugged youth department are sponsoring a holy hike on Cows Mountain on May 11th at 8 a.m. All are welcome to join in and hike and to get some exercise while thinking on the goodness of the Lord. So come on out to the fellowship event. For more information, please see Minister Janelle. We invite our members, guests, and friends to worship the Lord with us in person each Sunday at 1045 a.m. For our Global Life community, you can join us online at WFLMSanDiego.org, Vimeo, Facebook, or YouTube. We hope to see you soon. Join us for Christian education in person each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Come and grow in the Word. Be sure to attend Bible study each Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary at Work for Life Ministries. Pastor Joel will be teaching on the Gospels as we focus on Jesus. Our Global Life community can also join us online. Increase your prayer life. Join us on the prayer line each Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. and every Friday morning at 6.30 a.m. To submit a prayer request, text PRAYER to 858-360-1446. Word for Life Ministries is supported by donations, tithes, and offerings. We are grateful for our members and guests who give regularly in support of the work of the ministry. To give online, text GIVE to 858 858- 360-1446 or download the Givelify app from the Apple Store or Google Play. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for watching the announcements today. We want to invite you into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and to receive His salvation. Salvation is the process whereby our sin is removed and we enter into covenant with the Almighty God. Salvation is as easy as one, two, three. First, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died on the cross for our sins and rose in victory that we too would be made alive unto Christ. Second, repent of your sin, change your mind, and turn from sin by turning to the Lord with all of your heart. Third, be born again by baptism in water in Jesus' name. 
and receive the promised infilling of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Talk with the minister regarding salvation. Call us at area code 619-501-9379. May the Lord bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Wasn't that a day that changed the world? I find it interesting that even in this day and time, there are still skeptics with regard to, one, whether Jesus was indeed a real figure, and then number two, the more difficult one that some folks had is, did he really rise from the grave? Well, I want to give you, amen, a little, little primer to let you know that, yes, he was indeed real, yes. and yes, he did rise from the grave. You know, what I find interesting, especially not only as a pastor and theologian, amen, but also my, my regular career, amen, I'm an engineer, so I'm also a scientist, amen, and I find it interesting that mankind will base our learning on, uh, amen, what others have written, amen, we'll base our learning on books, We'll, we'll base our learning on peer-reviewed articles that others have written, 
Amen. And then we will base, amen, our new discoveries and the things that we find on and then compare them to things that have already been discovered and found. Amen. When you do, when you go to school to get your, your PhD, what happens? Amen. Not only are you researching, in some cases, new material, but you're also drawing upon what others have done. And I've, also, I've often wondered what happened if somebody way, way, way back, amen, and what they wrote about or what they espoused was wrong. But yet, when it comes to the things of the Bible, I find it interesting that people will say, well, well, that was written by man. It's like, well, wait a minute. What about that math book that you are reading? What about that, what about that chemistry book and physics book and biologic biological book, amen, that you read? What about that philosophical discussion, that book that you just read last week, amen, and had to take a test on? I'm wondering, who were those written by? But here's the difference. Because the Bible was written by those who were inspired, amen, by God through the Holy Ghost. And, and I remember I had an opportunity some years ago to talk to a man on the trolley. And um, he saw me. I can't remember if I had a Bible in my hand. I had, there was something that must, oh, I know what it was. There was a track that someone had left on the trolley seat. And I picked up the track and I read it. And I said, okay, this is good. I'm going to leave it on the seat for someone else to find. And so as I put it down, there was a gentleman sitting across from me. And so he said, so? And he was asking me, in a sense, did I believe or was I prepared for what was on the track? Apparently he had read it. So he looked at me, he said, so are you ready? And I told him, I said, yes, sir, yes, I am. And then we had this discussion, he told me he didn't know. And so I asked him, I said, are you ready? He said, well, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I believe that God exists. You know, I used to go to church at one time and I even have a Bible, but I haven't read it in a long time. So over the next several stops, we had a discussion, and I began to share with him, amen, about the likelihood that you could get multiple authors together, amen, not tell them what to write about, but tell them to write and then pull all the pieces together as an editor and then be able to stitch the entire volume together, and it all is cohesive and runs together and tells the story of the narrative, amen, ultimately of our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many people would be able to do that? And so as we begin to discuss, I said, so imagine today that you had an opportunity as a publisher to go out and tell 50 authors that you wanted them to write a book, amen, and that, amen, whatever they wrote, you would stitch together. I said, what's the likelihood that every single one of those 50 portions of that book would come together as a seamless whole? And so as he began to think about and some other things that we shared and talked about, and when he got to his stop, he got up and initially he didn't say anything. He got down the steps and he looked back at me. He said, you know, Thank you for that discussion. He said, I think I'm going to go home and pick up my Bible. <laughs> and sometimes all it takes is a word of encouragement to remind somebody yeah. about the importance of picking up the word of God. Yeah. The word of God, it is living. It is real. And I'm here to let you know, if you're asking God for questions and you need an answer, Pick this up, amen, and just open it and turn to a page. You know what God will do? God will supernaturally allow it to land on the right book, the right chapter, and the right verse that will help to meet yeah. your need in that moment. How many other books can do that? Ah, oh, my God, my God. So go ahead and get your Bibles on today because we will be going into the scriptures. Amen. We're going to, amen, again, if the Lord says the same, not be before you long. Amen. And again, we thank you for being in the house. For those of you that are online, amen, that's the camera that's on right now. Amen. God bless you. We want to say welcome to you. Thank you for joining us today. And we pray that you, amen, are having a wonderful time. Amen. We're certainly praying, amen, for our elderly and those that weren't able to make it today. Amen. Know that we are praying for you. We're praying for the Edwards family. Amen. And uh, we're praying uh, for many others who were not able to make it and those out of town or on vacation. Amen. God bless you. We are praying for you. Amen. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as you get your Bibles today, I am going to be reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures. And I know many of you either have Bibles or your, the, what I like to call the hard copy. Amen. Um, you may have your smart devices, so go ahead and break it out. Amen. So that you have the opportunity to read along with us. If you, do, if you are using a smart device and you don't have a Bible app on your phone, amen, I'm going to shame you just a little bit. Shame on you. Amen. Now go over to blueletterbible.com, amen, and download the free app, amen. Actually, you can go to Google Play or the Apple Store, amen, and you can download right now, amen. The one that I recommend is Blue Letter Bible, amen. It's not just a Bible. It also has study aids that are free, amen. The stuff that's available today, I paid good money for years and years ago, 
Amen. And now you have that available to you for free. Somebody say for free? For yes. Free. For free. Yes. Amen. For free. So go ahead and download that. Get that on your phone. That way there's no excuses when you leave home without your hard copy. Amen. No matter where you are, you can read the word of the Lord. Amen. amen. We're going to be going, amen, to John chapter 10. That's it. I heard you say it. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. And then we're also, amen, thank you. We're also going, amen, to St. John chapter 14 and verse number 6. And then we're also going to go back, amen, to the scripture reading that we had earlier this morning in Luke chapter 24. And there we will be reading, amen, verses 1 through 9. Amen, 1 through 9. We have a little bit of reading to do today, but I promise you, amen, if the Lord says the same, you don't always have to qualify it. You know, my intentions are good, but sometimes as the Lord begins to do what he decides to do, amen, he may lengthen, he may shorten, he may do whatever he does, but we're going to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost today. Is that all right? Amen. amen, as we do every day. Thank you, Father. In John chapter 10 and verse number 10, amen, if you have that, amen, I'm not going to ask you to stand today, but we do, amen, honor the word of the Lord. John chapter 10 and verse number 10, it simply reads as thus. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Somebody say more abundantly. More abundantly. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. John 14 and verse number six simply reads as thus. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Again, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and somebody say, and the life. And the life. Jesus is the life. Luke 24, verse number 1, this narrative that we read earlier today concerning the first day of the week. Amen. And Luke's narrative declares, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? But he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we are grateful today, hallelujah, for this great and wonderful day, this great reminder to us of your great power. Oh, God, that power Oh, God, that raised it not only yourself, but even on the day of your resurrection, opened up other graves and others arose. Oh, God, and were seen among their relatives during the time, oh, God, of your resurrection. Father, we thank you right now for robing yourself in flesh. Lord, for coming to dwell among your creation, for showing us, Lord, that we too have the ability to live again. And Lord, you went to the cross, oh, God. You experienced a cruel death, but, oh, God, on the third day, you rose again with all power in heaven and earth in your hands. And so, Lord, on this day and every day, we say thank you. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for the life. Thank you for all that you have done and continue to do for us on a daily basis. And now, Father, we ask that you would open up the hearts of your people to begin to receive your word. I ask, Lord, that your word would fall into good soil. Lord, as the ear of our hearts are opened and receptive to hear your word, oh God, help us to receive it with joy and with gladness. 
Lord, we ask that you would help us to hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. And Lord, we give you the glory. I decrease now that you would increase to receive all the glory and the honor and the praise. And I do ask these blessings now. And together we say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. From these passages of scripture on today, amen. And I'm going to ask you to help me out today, if you would. Amen. As you know, we are a live church. We are not a dead church. So it is okay to say amen. amen. It's okay to clap your hands, amen, as the word comes about. And if the word, amen, hits you a certain kind of way, it's okay to say ouch, amen, because we know that we will all grow, amen, as we receive with glad hearts the engrafted word of God. From these passages of scripture, I want to speak from the topic today. It's not about death. It's about life. It's not about death. It's about life. Many in the world today do not have an understanding of Christianity and therefore do not necessarily understand the reason why Jesus came. They often don't know, one, who Jesus is, number two, what his purpose was, number three, a man, they don't know whether to believe whether or not he was real and whether he died, and sure enough, whether to believe if he rose from the dead. So oftentimes, people wonder, why is it among the Christian community that they are so concerned about the death and the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ? And many of us in our lives have experienced death in our families, with our loved ones, with those that are close to us. And we ponder the question, is there more to life than this? What comes a man after a person has died and has been placed into the ground? A man, the Bible lets us know that it is appointed unto man once to die, but then the judgment. The Bible also lets us know that when God created mankind from the dust of the ground, the Bible says something unique about mankind and what God did with man. With all the other things that God created, we find that God spoke those things into existence. Amen. God spoke the world into existence. He spoke the heaven and earth into existence. He spoke the great lights into existence. He spoke a man, the firmament and the atmosphere into existence. He spoke the heavens into existence. He spoke the cosmos into existence. He spoke the sun, the moon, and the stars into existence. A man, he spoke the waters and sea life and life that began to fly in the air. He spoke that life into existence. He spoke the things that began to creep upon the ground and cattle and herds. He spoke those things into existence. He spoke the flower and the herbs and the trees. He spoke those things into existence. But then he got to day six and he did something a little bit different than he had done before. With everything else, he spoke those things into existence. But when it came time to create mankind, God got intimate with the dust of the earth. He used his hands. The Bible says that he formed man from the dust of the ground in the book of Genesis. But then he does something else. The Bible says that he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And then something supernatural happened. The Bible says that man became a living soul. So God took from that which was inanimate, the dust of the ground, he breathed into that inanimate substance his own breath, creating therefore life, fusing and merging the two together and creating something that had not existed before. Yes. He created a soul that lives eternally. So within each and every one of you today, although you are in a physical shell, and although we recognize, amen, that this shell is going to die and decay and go back to the earth from whence it came, yet something that is unique in each and every one of you is you possess within you a part of you, a piece of you, the person that you are that will live forever. Tell somebody, you will survive this death. 
You will survive this death. The question is, is where will you reside when, hallelujah, you survive this death? Because there are only two places in scripture that we have to go. Amen. It is either heaven or it is hell. It is either with the Lord or it is in that place of torment with the enemy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so because mankind as a whole recognizes that man will die, there are times when there are people among us that may be concerned or fearful of death. And then there are others that a man, because of their morbid mentality, may be fascinated for whatever reason with death. And so when people look at Christians, they wonder why, hallelujah, amen, why do we talk about the death and the burial of Jesus? Because in order for us to understand what life is all about, we have to understand why it was necessary for Jesus to die. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death but that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's back up for a moment. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The Bible lets us know that we were all, hallelujah, because a man of the disobedience of our forefather Adam, amen, all of us, all of us are related, amen, through common ancestry. And that common ancestry goes all the way back down through Noah, amen, beyond the flood and all the way back to Adam, amen. We all share a common ancestor, and that common ancestor is Adam and Eve. And the Bible lets us know that because of the disobedience of Adam, a man that Adam sinned, and when he sinned, and Eve sinned, that he thrust, a man, all of mankind, ultimately that would, uh, uh, that would come from Adam and Eve, he thrust all of us into sin. So the Bible says that we were all born into sin and that we were shapen in iniquity. And because the penalty of sin is death, Amen. Each and every one of us from the time that we were born, even as what we call innocent babies, we had the sentence of death on our lives. So because we were sentenced to die, amen, God before the foundation of the world developed a plan that would ultimately free us from that death sentence. And so when someone wonders why do, hallelujah, we talk about the death and the burial of Jesus, because the purpose of God coming in flesh, the purpose of God robing himself in flesh, the purpose of God allowing the Virgin Mary to become pregnant, hallelujah, with his essence, and hallelujah, to birth now that among us which now possesses flesh, flesh bones, and blood. The Bible says that God is a spirit and that a spirit does not possess flesh, bones, and blood. Hallelujah. But God knew that in order to save us, he had to become like us. And in order to come like us, he had to, amen, take upon himself that substance that he created us with. He did not possess flesh, bones, and blood, but he had to come into this world and take on himself the same nature that you and I have so that he could do something for us that no one else would do. What was that? We had the sentence of death on us. And because the sentence of death on, was on us, hallelujah, no matter what we did, we were destined to die. Tell somebody, no matter what I did, I was destined to die. Hallelujah. But God said, I don't want you to die. I want you to live. Amen. Hallelujah. And so before the foundation of the world, God crafted a plan to come into the world and become the substitute for us. Amen. The Bible uses fancy words like propitiation. That just means substitute. Christ became the propitiation for us. He became the substitute for us. The easy way is to explain it like this. If you, a man, had been on trial and convicted of murder and you were sentenced, a man, to the electric chair or to the gas chamber, there is a sure sentence. The, the judge has said he will not commute the sentence. A man, the state has said there is no way, a man, that you could, that you could ever be liberated from this sentence because the evidence was insurmountable. The 
evidence was there. There was no uh, questionable evidence. Amen. Everyone that testified in the case was an eyewitness and the testimony was solid against you. Amen. Hallelujah. You were sentenced to death. You knew that you were going to die. and You were sitting awaiting for the time. Amen. Of your execution but then all of a sudden, somebody that you didn't even know walks into your cell and says, you are free to go because I have become the substitute to take the punishment for you. That's what Jesus did for us. Right. Hallelujah. Jesus walked into the world, stepped into the lives of everyone who was willing to receive him and believe him and make for us, therefore, a path whereby we could be liberated from death. But in order from, for us to be liberated from death, somebody had to die. Hallelujah. Somebody had to die. And so we need to understand, though, that the story today is not just about death. Because through death, hallelujah, we have life. That sounds like a paradox. Amen. How can we die and yet have life at the same time? Jesus showed us. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up again. He wasn't talking about the physical temple during that time. He was talking about, amen, the path whereby he was going to go to, amen, the grave and then rise in victory, therefore rebuilding that which had been destroyed, but now taking it and rebuilding it from scratch and making it brand new. And so we find out today that it is not about death, but Easter is about life. Hallelujah. And I know some of you have a problem with that word Easter, so let me break it down for you for a moment. There is right now all over the internet all over a man people that are talking about you shouldn't use the word Easter because Easter is a pagan holiday listen let me can I can I tell somebody say pastor can you help us out today say help us out pastor help us out how many of you have the King James version of the scriptures do you know that the word Easter is actually in the King James version of the scriptures and if you go to some of the older translations both from a man Greek into German and then also from Greek into English or from Latin into English, there are some words that approximate our word Easter today. Even in German, there is a word that approximates our English word Easter. Now, I recognize that there during the month of April, that yes, there were gods and goddesses and all sorts of things that certain organizations and groups worshiped in time past, and it happened to coincide with similar times as the worship of the celebration of the rising of the resurrection of Jesus. But don't get it twisted. Easter has nothing to do with a pagan holiday. Easter has everything to do with the resurrection. In fact, when you, d d uh, when you correctly derive the word Easter from its original words, the words are the same words that describe the Passover. Come on now. And the Passover as we knew it today is based upon the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the Jews, amen, it was related to the time when God passed over them and delivered them out of Egypt for those that had the blood on the doorposts and on the lentils. But later on, Jesus rose after Passover. Hallelujah. He was crucified on Passover, but he rose on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. And Sunday, we celebrate Easter, which we also call Resurrection Sunday. So somebody can say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for Easter, and thank you for rising on Easter Resurrection Sunday. Tell somebody, it's not about death. I haven't forgotten where I'm going today. It's about life. So we find out that Jesus, when he walked this earth, that his sole aim was to help people understand it's not about death. You are so focused on dying that you don't know how to live. Hallelujah. So Jesus wanted to shift our mindset off of death and help us to look beyond this physical death. 
And so he would talk about death, but he would let his disciples know that one day not only would he die, but he would rise again. But because the disciples had no concept of rising or somebody physically rising from the dead, they wondered how was Jesus going to accomplish this? Because oftentimes when he was talking with them, amen, I don't believe that at that point they had had a chance to experience the resurrection of Lazarus just yet. Hallelujah. But Jesus would tell them, I'm going to rise again. And then when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, they got a little bit of a glimpse. But even after Jesus' death, they still forgot. Hallelujah. They were still disciples. I'm reminded of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, a man that they had a hearty discussion about this one that they had supposed to be the Messiah. And they were they were discombobulated. Amen. And they were uh, disheartened and any other dis that you can think about. Amen. They had it, but they communed with one another and they talked and they met Jesus on the way. And they were talking about the events that had just transpired. And Jesus said, what's going on? And they said, wait a minute, who are you? Don't you know? What the, haven't you heard about the events that took place in Jerusalem? Don't you know about Jesus, the man that we had hoped was going to be our Savior, that the one we thought was going to save us and, and to deliver, hallelujah, us into his kingdom? And he died, and our hopes were dashed. And Jesus said, oh, fools and slow of hearts to believe all that the scriptures have said concerning me in the Bible. Bible says that beginning, hallelujah, amen, with the law of Moses and all the prophets that Jesus went down in uniform manner, and he had Bible study with them on the road to Emmaus, and the Bible says that he began to teach and remind them of the things concerning himself. Everything that talked about Jesus and his coming, everything that talked about the Messiah, everything that talked about his resurrection, even he, though he would experience death, yet there would be life from the midst of death, Jesus reminded them, hallelujah, that he indeed was coming back again. And even though when he talked with them, they still didn't know who he was, the Bible says that when they got to Emmaus, they went into the house and they invited Jesus to come because Jesus acted like he was going somewhere else. They said, no, come on, hang out with us for a minute. And so as they begin to prepare the meal, the Bible says, amen, essentially they allowed him to break bread. And the Bible says when he breasted when he broke the bread, the bread and blessed it, all of a sudden their eyes were open. They knew who it was. And the Bible says Jesus vanished out of their sight. And then they began to commune with one of them. Man, did you see that? What was going on? Man, did not our hearts burn within yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus wants to remind us today it's not about death. It is about life. You need to understand that, yes, this body is going to decay. It's going to go to the grave. But although it goes to the grave, I have and you have a hope beyond the grave. It's not about death. It's about life. How did Jesus show us that? Because the Bible says he got up again. Luke tells us that on the first day of the week, early in the morning, the Bible lets us know that it was Mary and Joanna and a few others that were with them. They had decided they were going to get up early in the morning because they wanted to go to the tomb. And they wanted to take care of some final aspects of burial. They had taken some spices with them. They had taken stuff with them because they had an expectation that Jesus was dead. Some of us, oh my God, some of us walk through life, hallelujah, having an expectation that everything in our life is dead. Hallelujah. So they came to the tomb because they were expecting Jesus to be dead. How many of us come to church and rather than coming to church expecting Jesus to be alive, we come to church expecting to have a dead service. Hallelujah. To have a dead sermon. Hallelujah. To have a dead experience. And then we leave. Hallelujah. Amen. Wondering why we haven't been changed. Because your expectation was in the wrong place. You had an expectation of death when you need to change your paradigm and say, I need now a new paradigm. I need, hallelujah, an expectation of life. So they went to the tomb with an expectation of death, but something happened. They got to the tomb and they found out that what they had supposed was completely different than the reality of the situation. How many of us go into a situation with a presupposition of what we think is going to happen only to get into the situation and find out that what took place is nothing like what we thought it was? I'm going to help some 
husbands and wives out today. Amen. Sometimes you go into a situation with a preconceived notion and idea of what you think is going on. And you've played the scenario out in your mind. And then you have a discussion with your significant other, with your spouse. And you talk with them and you sit down and you find out that was nothing like I thought. Hallelujah. So they went to the tomb with a presupposition. But when they got there, they saw the evidence of something completely different than what they expected. And they saw the stone rolled away. Hallelujah. And they saw some angels sitting up on the tomb. Can you imagine this? Can you get a sight of this? Imagine you were going to a graveyard. Amen. In antiquity and in this graveyard, amen, there are all of these caves with, with stones, amen, covering the opening of the tomb. And so you go to go check out your relative, amen, and when you get there, the stone is rolled away. Amen. You're going to be wondering what kind of craziness is this? What is going on? Hallelujah. You go into the mausoleum and instead of the door being closed where that casket is, amen, the doors open, the casket doors open on the inside. You wonder what's going on. You roll it out and nobody's in there. What kind of craziness is this? But they went to the tomb, and they saw some angels hanging out on top of the stone. Come on now. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. Going to the place that you thought was going to be a place of death, and you get there, and the angels look at you, and they say, yo, what's going on? Hallelujah. Amen. You came here with the wrong purpose. You came here with the thought of death on your mind. And so they said, why did you come here seeking the living among the dead? Hallelujah. Because Jesus has risen again. He ascended just like he said and he told he told me to remind you to go back into Galilee like he told you hallelujah hallelujah so even the angels had to have a little fun with it and tell them Jesus is not here he is risen like he said so why did you come here seeking living among dead stuff listen change your paradigm tell somebody say change your paradigm don't come to church a man looking for dead stuff Hallelujah, because Jesus is not dead, he's alive. So yeah. when we come to church, we come with the expectation of serving a real, live Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our God is not dead, he's alive. So they came to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away. They entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hallelujah. Their mind, the scenario that they had wrapped around, their mind was blown. They came prepared to put ointment on a body that was wrapped in grave clothes. But they got to the tomb and there was nobody there. They were perplexed. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth. And they said unto them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. That word crucified denoted a specific manner of death. It was one of the cruelest, most inhumane methods that Romans, hallelujah, had, 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 had put into mind to put a man or a woman to death was by crucifixion. The most gruesome death that a person could undergo, hallelujah, was death by crucifixion. Jesus said, or the angels told them that Jesus had said, Amen, that he was going to be crucified. But don't get it twisted because I'm not going to stay in that state that crucifixion will put me in. I'm going to be changed. I'm going to rise yeah. again. Yeah. And you know, and he told them exactly what it was going to happen. He said, I'm going to rise the third day. Can you imagine that? Imagine that you were sentenced to death. Amen. But God has already told you when to expect to be resurrected. Jesus said, I'm going to die. But in three days, I'm getting up. You can take that to the bank. I'm going to die. But in three days, I'm getting up. So the angels reminded them. And the, ver the word says in verse number eight, and they remembered his words. They returned from Amen, the sepulcher, and they told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. Yeah. And I wonder what types of things 
they might have remembered. And so when we look at the scriptures, we read two scriptures today, one from John 10 and 10 and one from John 14 and 6. And man, remember that Jesus told them that the thief cometh not, but not for, but to steal, to kill, and destroy. The aim of the devil is to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his MO. That's what he comes to do. Don't expect for the devil to do anything less than what he has already explained to us in the word is going to happen. His MO is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil is not your friend. He wants you dead. Make no mistake about it. Hallelujah. He may want to party with you. He may, not, he may want to hang out with you for now. He may want to drink with you. He may want to snort with you. He may want to smoke with you. But the end game, come on now, you got to understand the end game. The devil is not there to hang out with you. The devil is there to help get your mind off of Jesus and to get you distracted because he wants you to die and go to hell so he can have somebody there in hell. And guess what? There ain't going to be no party in hell either. Hallelujah. The devil is not your friend. Jesus said that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but on the converse. Yeah. Hallelujah. On the flip side. Yeah. Amen. That's side A, but this is side B. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The devil wants to kill you, but on side B, I want to help you live. Yeah. The devil wants to destroy you, but I want to help bring you life. Hallelujah. Yeah. The devil wants you dead, but I'm here to let you know that it's not about death. It's about life. Yeah. And if you get it together here in accordance with my word, you will have an opportunity to experience that eternal life because it's not about death. It's about life. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yes. Jesus not only wants you to experience life, but he wants you to experience an abundant life. Jesus wants you to experience life like you have never experienced before. Jesus wants you to understand that although we may leave this place, there's another place that we're going that's so much better than this. Hallelujah. Amen. This place is like one dimension. Now, I know we see in three dimensions, but imagine, amen, as I'm trying to compare, compare this place with where we're going, this place is black and white. This place is one dimension. The place where God has for us is an explosion of color compared to black and white. And it is 3D compared to a one-dimensional line on a page. God is trying to help us to understand that which our minds cannot conceive. That where he wants us to go to be with him is a place of wonder, a place of beauty, a place where we are with God. God in the presence of the Lord and everything we will experience will heighten our senses which will be new and different so that we can experience all the abundant greatness that God is and we will not be destroyed because we'll have brand new bodies. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not about death. It's about life. Amen. So I want to say to you today that if you're worried about death, then we need to change the paradigm. How do we get from being so concerned about death that we can move beyond death and begin to focus about life? You know why we're absorbed with death? We're absorbed with death because when we understand we're not in the place we're supposed to be, hallelujah, that if God were to come today and we were left here, or if we were to die, hallelujah, that death, would be a reality. Because not only would we die physically, but even though this soul leaves on, it will also experience another death, a spiritual death, which is when the soul gets thrown into the lake of fire. The Bible says that that is the second death. That is a spiritual death. That is a death that you can never recover from. So the preoccupation with death is generally among those who don't have hope and expectation for the life that Jesus provides. But Jesus is saying it's not about death, it's about life. I need to get you to understand it's not about death. Stop thinking about that place and start worrying about that place. Stop worrying about the death and decay of this and start thinking beyond this about what Jesus provides so that we can live with him in eternity. Tell somebody it's not about death. It's about, death. It's about, life. It's about life. So my question to you now is what do you want? Death or life? 
death or life. Death or life. Because you are the one who chooses. So I say to you today, choose wisely. Because Jesus says, as the Lord God said in the Old Testament, see, I set before you this day death and life. And you know what I love about God? God not only provides us a multiple choice question, but then he gives us the answer. And he didn't give us three or four or five choices. He gave us two options. He says, this is the question, life, death. And he says, you choose, but then check it out. So he's saying, okay, A is life, B is death. And then if you read the scripture, Jesus says, choose the life. Or God says, choose life. So in other words, he's given you the question, and then he gives you the right answer. And then he says, but you still have to choose. Do you want life or do you want death? He says, this is the right answer. But you have the right to choose whether you want this or whether you want that. That reminds me of a song. Some of you know it. You can get with this or you can get with that. Which one do you want? It's not about death, and I come to remind you today, it's about life. Let us stand today. How do we get beyond thinking about death? We get beyond thinking about death by understanding and walking in the way that Jesus desires for us to walk. Jesus told a man, man named Nicodemus who came to him by night, Nicodemus is like us. We have a lot of questions. Nicodemus was a ruler. He was part of the Sanhedrin. And at that time, when he came to see Jesus, the Sanhedrin had already made a decision that it was not in Jesus' corner. But there were those in the Sanhedrin who had decided that they wanted to get to know some more about Jesus because they were beginning to search the scriptures and begin to understand this might indeed be the very Christ. So Nicodemus went to Jesus in St. John chapter 3. And he said, good master, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the things that you do. You know what I love about Jesus? It's just like right now. Jesus sees beyond the wall that we put up and the fake question that we ask. And Jesus sees to the heart of the matter. So Jesus ignored the platitude and Jesus went right to the realness of what was behind Nicodemus' heart. And so Nicodemus had all of these platitudes to start the conversation off and Jesus was like, you know what, I know why you're here. Let me tell you what you need to know. I'm paraphrasing. Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus did not quite understand what Jesus said. He said, how can a man be born again when he is old? Will he go again the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Nicodemus, aren't you a ruler? Don't you know these things? A grown man, there's no physical way for a grown man to go back and be born from his mother's womb. So I'm not talking about <laughs> natural birth, Nicodemus. Jesus then made it plain. He said, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he said he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. 
And I want to let you know today that part of getting beyond death is understanding that in order for us to get beyond death and experience the life that only Jesus can bring, we must be born again. In preparation for being born again, the Bible tells us that we must first be willing to believe, amen, that God is who he says he is, that Jesus is real, that God came, that he robed himself in flesh, amen, and that Jesus came, Jesus, the son of God, but Jesus also very God manifested in the flesh. I like the way the apostle Paul puts it, hallelujah, that he was manifested or made known in the flesh. He was Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is God with us. That Jesus came. We must believe that Jesus is real. That Jesus lives today. That not only did he die, he didn't stay in the grave. Hallelujah. Everybody else stayed in the grave. But Jesus got up and stayed. Tell somebody he got up and stayed up. And there were a few others that rose with Jesus on that day in accordance with the scriptures. But guess what? They had to go back to the grave. But Jesus got up and stayed up. So we must be willing to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. We must be willing to confess our faults and our sin. We must make confession to the Lord. Lord, hallelujah, I've sinned against you. Amen. David gives us an awesome example in Psalms 51. Hallelujah. Where David says, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou, may, that thou mayest be clear when thou judgest. Hallelujah. We can make that open confession today and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am in need of your salvation, and only you can provide it. Hallelujah. That is an open confession that we can make unto the Lord God. The Bible says that we must also repent. And many don't understand what that word really means. The Bible says that godly sorrow worketh repentance. Yeah. When we're sorry for our past and our sin, that begins to work repentance, but the godly sorrow in and of itself is not repentance. Godly sorrow leads us to repentance. Well, then what is repentance? Repentance comes from a Greek word, metanoeo, which means to have a change of mind, which then leads us to a change in direction. So in other words, repentance is the process of changing your mind and deciding I'm tired of the way that I've been living. I'm tired of the life that I've been living, and I am ready to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So repentance is about turning away from sin and making up in your mind and deciding, I want to serve the Lord. And you begin to serve the Lord with all of your heart. Repentance. God says we can repent. God gives you the ability to repent. Change your mind. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, but I'm coming to you again. And then we must be born again of the water and of the spirit. And we have a baptismal pool today that is ready. We have clothing, amen, for men, women, and children. If you have not been born again of the water and of the spirit, you can come today. This is the altar call, amen. Come on, young people, amen. This is the altar call today. And as we prepare, amen, for the altar call, amen, I want to ask the saints that are here, just, amen, begin praying, amen. If you know that you are in need of the master's touch you've been focused on death you've been preoccupied with dying and wondering if if you're doing what you need to do in your life and you know that you have not been following hallelujah amen the word of the lord and doing what he has asked us to do you can come today you can come we will pray the prayer of faith with you hallelujah we will pray amen for repentance in your life we will pray Amen, that the Lord will deliver you and strengthen you. We will pray for you today. If you have not been born again, we will pray, hallelujah, that the Lord, amen, would save you, that, that you would become obedient to the baptismal command and that you would be plunged in that watery grave. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Why is baptism so important? It is the process of baptism by immersion in water, the Bible says that we are buried with Christ through baptism. That even as Christ was buried and rose from the grave, even so do we, amen, we rise in the likeness of his resurrection. If we have been planted in the likeness of his death, that's a focus on death. But it says that we shall also rise in the likeness of his resurrection. That's the focus on life, that you will live again. 
Hallelujah. You will die to sin, but you will now rise up in victory unto the Lord. You can rise today. Hallelujah. I'm calling on backsliders today. Those of you who once knew the Lord, and for whatever, for whatever reason you may have walked away from him, this is, this is a reconnection for you with your heavenly father. He wants you to know how much he loves you. Everything that you've experienced in life up to this point has been a reminder for you that God loves you because it has drawn you to this very point at this very moment in time. Hallelujah. I want to invite you to reconnect with the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you come today? Come on. Come on. You can come. You can come. You can come. No matter where you are, you can come. You can come. Remember, it's about life. It's not about death. Hallelujah. Change your paradigm and come on. Hallelujah. Life may have dealt you a bad hand, but it's not about death. It's about life. God can change your situation. Hallelujah. And allow you to experience a new birth. You can experience new birth today. Come on. If you're here today, come on and experience the new birth. You can be born again of the water and of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The invitation is open. Jesus is here. You can be born again. Just pray and ask the Lord. I want to ask you to bow your head. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see all that are here today and gathered. Lord, many have already received you and are walking with you. But we also recognize that there may be someone here, Lord, who may not know you and may not be at this present time walking with you. And Father, we intercede for them right now. Father, we intercede that you would begin to touch their heart and their mind, oh God. Lord, whatever the distraction, whatever the circumstance, whatever the hindrance, I pray now that you would remove it, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. That you would bless them to realize and to understand that your call, hallelujah, hallelujah is on them right now. Lord, you are calling them. Hallelujah, Lord. You're touching their heart, oh God. You may even be bringing the tears. Somebody online right now, God, they're just, hallelujah, Lord. They're overtaken, Lord, with, with just the thought that, Lord, they need you once again. And, Father, right now, that person, Lord, that is saying, God, I need you. You can say it right now in your heart. Say, Lord, I need you now. I need you now. I need you now, Lord. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, come and see about me, Lord. Lord, come and wrap your arm around me. Hallelujah. Remind me who you are, Lord, and remind me whose I am. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way. Have your way right now, Father. Begin to touch and console Oh, God, remind them, Lord, that you love them, Lord. Lavish your love upon them right now. Remind them, oh, God, that your blood is available right now in this moment. Your blood is available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary. Thank you. Hallelujah for rising for me and reminding us that it's not about death. Yes, you died. Yes, you went to the cross. Yes, you shed your blood. And all of those things are important, but all of those things lead to the one realization that it's all about life. So, Father, we pray for your people right now, and we pray for all those that are here and those that are online watching right now at this very moment. God, bring life right now. Breathe life now into that wayward heart, God. Begin to renew, Lord. Lord, as they begin to cry out to you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Just begin to touch them now in the name of Jesus. Let God begin to move in a mighty way. Touch right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you in Jesus' name. As you continue worshiping, as you are praying and seeking the Lord, I want to make one more call for the altar. If you're here today, you know you're not where you need to be. This is the call. The Lord is speaking to your heart and to your life right now. He's saying, come, come, come. You can come. You can come, but the choice is yours. Jesus has set before you this day death and life, and he pleads with you, choose life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you're in need of prayer, this is the general altar call. If you are just in need of prayer, you're saying, Pastor, I just need you to pray for me for whatever it is, whatever your need is. Amen. You can come today to receive prayer. Come on right now. 
Amen. Ministers, would you come in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's anoint our brother. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Is there anybody else that is in need of prayer? Would you come? Thank you, Jesus. All of you saints of God, just lift your hands and just pray with us. Father, right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Someone else today, very quickly, very quickly, if you're here today, if you're here today, come on, come on, we want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come on. Thank you, Jesus.
And this young man wants to continue to strengthen his connection with the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands and put them this way. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Remember, Brother Tyler, touching in the name of Jesus. Father, he wants a closer walk with you to strengthen the relationship, oh God, that he's been developing with you. Lord, give him a closer walk, oh God. Walk with him daily. Oh God, be by his side. Father, I pray that you would fill him full of your spirit and your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, Lord, don't just walk with him, but walk within him through the Holy Ghost, God. Hallelujah. Don't just be with him, but be within him, for that is what your Holy Spirit comes to do. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, he has already been washed, oh God, in your blood. But now, Lord, begin to feel him and rise up in him, Lord, through your power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, through your spirit, endow him now, oh God, right now, oh God, and let him experience, oh God, hallelujah, Lord, that communion with you, hallelujah, that comes through your spirit, oh God, do it now, we praise you, we love you, we glorify you, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. For taking time with us today. I want to say to you, amen, whatever your needs are, amen, if you, uh, if you are in need of prayer, whatever it is, amen, let us know. Come and see us. We want to meet our guests after service. We do have treats. Don't leave right away. We got treats for you. Refresh. We do have refreshments, amen. So I'm definitely going to, amen, take advantage of that, amen, because I am parched now. <laughs> God bless you all. We love you. In just a moment, we're going to get ready, amen, to, um, amen, to take the offering, amen. And uh, there are a couple of ways to give. Amen. If you would like to give here in person, amen, you can give by cash or check. If you are providing or writing out a check, I know not many people use checks anymore. Amen. But for those of you that still do, you can make your check out to Word for Life Ministries. Amen. Word for Life Ministries. We do have envelopes, so if you would like to give, amen, you can give via an envelope. The second way to give is you can give electronically. Amen. We have a, a service that we use called Givelify. And so you can either go into your phone, and if you already have the Givelify app and you have location services turned on, it will identify Word for Life Ministries for you. If you want the easier way to do it, you can do this. Text G-I-V-E, text GIVE to 858-360-1446, and you will be provided with the prompts that will take you to our Givelify site directly and you could then enter your information there. Amen. So again, amen. You can use Givelify. Thank you so much. I want to say to each and every one of you, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support of this ministry to our guests. Thank you so much for coming today. Amen. We certainly are glad that you came to fellowship with us and we appreciate you coming. Let us know how we can serve you. Amen. God bless you in Jesus name. I'm going to ask Deke if you would come and ask the blessing over the offering today. Oh, you can use my mic. Amen. If we can raise our offerings up to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we thank you, God, for life and that more abundantly, Lord God. We thank you for gifts that we have to give to you, God, to help us to spread your word, oh God, to spread the fact that you are offering abundant life, oh God. We pray that you will bless these blessings. We pray that you would anoint them and use them for your glory, God. We love you. We bless you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you could follow the, the directions of the ushers in the rear.